Hi everyone, Matt Collins here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple running rig from a lead clip, a run ring and a swivel lead. I call this system the shock and run. It's very effective because it delivers the full weight of the lead as soon as the carp picks up the rig. Once the carp realises it's hooked, it shakes its head and then the lead slides away and it turns into a running rig. This prevents the carp from using the weight of the lead to throw the rig. This brings all the benefits of a traditional lead clip system without any of the downsides. It means that we don't have to dump the lead on every take. That's better for the environment and it's better for your wallet. So lead clips are a very commonly used piece of terminal tackle. But if you watch my video on how lead clips can be dangerous, you'll know that it's very easy to set them up wrong. The problem is, if you set a lead clip up right, you lose a lead every time. And that's something I just hate to do. Some of you may be familiar with a trick which involves crimping the end of a swivel to convert a lead clip into a running lead setup. And again, if you watch my lead clip video, you'll see why that's really not a good idea. Okay, let's get into it now. So we're gonna need a Nash heavy duty lead clip. We're going to need the matching tail rubber. Then we're going to need a run ring. We'll also be needing a size eight ring swivel, some silicon tube, a quick link, a swivel lead, and some rig tubing. I'm also going to be using some medium tungsten sinkers. So I'm going to start building the tubing version of this rig. And I've got a great little trick to help you thread tubing much easier. So to start, I'm going to cut the tubing at a 45 degree angle. Then I'm going to take the swivel lead and I'm going to thread the tubing through the swivel. Next, I'm going to take the tail rubber and I'm carefully going to push the tubing into the tail rubber. I'm then going to slide the swivel down over the tail rubber like that. And what that's going to do is when I pick the tubing up, the tubing hang straight. This is going to make it a real dream to thread. So the next stage is we can start working with the main line. So I've got my main line here and I just run it through my fingers. Just give it a bit of a check, helps straighten it, stops any kinks and stuff, gives it a bit of a clean. Must be clean and dry the main line, it's really important. Then we're going to make our 45 degree cut across the main line to make it easier to thread. Let's check for any burrs there. No, that's a nice clean cut. This is optional, this sinker, but it's really useful. It's going to help stop the tubing riding up the main line, which can be a problem. If you're going to use a tungsten sinker, choose one that is no bigger than the diameter of the tubing. I find these medium ones to be absolutely perfect. Then all we're going to do is slide the sinker up the main line. Get it way up the way like that. That's great. Now we can take our tubing and I'm just going to take the lead, lower it down towards the deck there. And you'll see how this lead holds that tubing beautifully straight. It makes it so much easier to thread tubing. And all we do is feed that through. It's absolutely firing through this is. Really quick. Yep, that's through. I'm just gonna pop that tail rubber off there. Yep, it was through there. And we'll just slide the tubing up the main line, to give us a bit of space to work with. Next we take our silicon sleeve. I'm just going to cut that in two because we only need half of it. For the next bit I'm going to take the run ring and just hook it on the quick link. Can be a bit fiddly to do that. And that clips together nicely like that. Then we take half of our silicon sleeve, pop that on there like that. And I just want to slide that sleeve up over the ring just to expose the tag so I can clip the lead on. Take the lead Clip that on the quick link like that. Slide the sleeve over. 
to make a nice neat job. Then we take the main line, pass the line through the run ring and slide that up through like that. We follow on directly with the tail rubber, pass that through. Now at this point you've got an option. What I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to modify this lead clip by cutting the leg off. Now this means that I'm never going to be able to use this lead clip again in the traditional fashion but it makes for a dedicated neat setup for this rig. You don't need to do this next step if you want to use this lead clip for both this system and to be used in the traditional fashion then don't do this next step but I'm going to do it. Right best tool I found for this job is a Stanley knife with a very sharp new blade. Be really careful I've got a sacrificial block of chestnut there. Very securely hold the clip and just slide and chop. There we go that's not gone bad just got a bit of excess there that I can shave. There we go spot on. Okay we're going to take the modified lead clip pass the line through and we can add our swivel so I'm using the Nash bullet 20 pound 0.40 main line really robust stuff done a load of testing on this and the five turn tuck blood is very strong very reliable so we go five turns up then through the hole and then fold it back through that loop very carefully tease it down and when you get to about that point there we can wet it. So I take my lighter, a few turns around that, don't cross the wraps, keep it wet, got a rig puller in my other hand here and just draw that down. You give it a blooming good pull. If it breaks it's okay, do it again really strong, really secure. Now we can trim the tag end. I'm going to trim that about four or five mil, something like that, because I don't want a big tag end because we've got to tuck that up inside the lead clip. Now we can start pulling this together. Now I found it's quite important how you orientate the swivel with reference to the big slot in the lead clip here. So if I have the lead clip like that, I want the the swivel to be perpendicular. I found if you get the orientation of that swivel correct it makes loading this little fork tag really easy and it just pops in ever so easy like that. If it doesn't pop in easy like that then there's a problem with how you've inserted the swivel into the lead clip. Now we can bring the tail rubber and the lead clip together but before I do that I'm going to wet it to make it easier to push on. Now normally pushing a lead clip on fully like that is not a good idea but in this situation that's exactly what I want to do. Drive that tail rubber all the way onto the lead clip. Now we can take the rig tubing and insert the rig tubing into the tail rubber like that and push it all the way in as far as it will go. Next we need to get that top sinker into place. There's the sinker, just hold the sinker, pull the main line through until it arrives at the top of the tubing like that. The final step is to add what I call a telltale. To make a telltale all we need is 10-15 centimetres of mono. can be anything you want really for this but I'm just going to use some of my main line spool. So we just cut off 15 centimetres there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through you've got the big ring there and you've got the small ring of the swivel. I'm just going to pass the line through the small ring if I just roughly equalise the length so it's kind of folded in half and I'm just going to take the one tag end and do that's a four turn blood knot that'll do. Now in this instance 
I'm going to cut off that one there just at a mill so it's nice and neat, nice and tight. So I don't want this to interfere with the ring swivel if I can help it. I just slide it round more towards the back of the swivel like that. Now I need to trim this to length. I'm going to trim it to the same length of the top of the tail rubber like that. I then take the run ring and slide that onto the tail rubber. And I just push that on, give a little tweak on the telltale. So that's the system complete with a bite indicator. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach a rig and show you exactly how it works. Before I can simulate how this works underwater, what I need to do is I need to wet the tail rubber, otherwise it doesn't work right. Okay, that's ready to test. So rig's going to land something like that. Don't really worry about this curve, it lands how it lands, but I know it's going to pancake flat because of the rig mechanics given by the mono hair rig. Carp comes along, and the first thing he's going to do, he's going to feel the weight of the lead, and then he's going to give it a shake. Bonk, it's off. The lead has given the full weight of impact to the hook. This makes sure that the carp is properly hooked. One shake, and the lead is off, but it's not lost it's now into a running rig. So whichever way that carp moves, the lead is acting as a pivot. This gives us the best of both worlds. This gives us the, all the magic effects of the bolt rig or a lead clip setup with none of the downsides. Whichever way this fish moves, the lead is going to act as a pivot and the line's going to pass through that ring and we're going to get great bite indication. The initial impact force ensures that the carp is really well hooked to start with. If all you've ever used is lead clips, then they're great. They give that initial bolt effect, that initial impact, that hooking force. But if you set them up right, it means that you lose the lead. If you don't lose the lead, the carp is simply going to use the weight of the lead to sling the hook out. And you might not even get a beep. With this setup, you get all the benefits of that initial hooking force without any of the downsides. It means that we don't have to lose a lead every time we catch a fish. That's better for your wallet and it's better for the environment. There might be other lead clips that work just as well as the Nash. The reason I've chosen the Nash Heavy Duty Tail Rubber and Nash Heavy Duty Clip is that there's serrations on both the clip and inside the tail rubber. When you push it on, it takes quite a lot of force to push it on and it really grips well. And that's exactly what we need for this setup. If you don't happen to have any of the Nash heavy duty clips and tail rubbers, do try with the lead clips that you've got. If it works like the Nash one does, then great, you can use this system. But if the tail rubber is coming off the lead clip, then I wouldn't use this system. Now I'm gonna show you how the telltale system works. So I've reset this clip as I originally had it and the telltale has been tucked fully in underneath the run ring. Carp comes along, feels the weight of the lead, gives it a shake, bunk, it's off. Now, worst case scenario here, perhaps the hook wasn't quite sharp enough or it was damaged or there was a bit of twig that got in the way of the hook point or a leaf. The end result is that perhaps the carp was actually able to spit this rig. So you've got a flurry of bleeps. So on winding, this is going to be what you see. So the lead will have pulled the run ring down onto the tail rubber like that. You can see that the telltale tail is now free out in the open because it's come untucked from the run ring. This tells us that a carp has picked up that rig and ejected it. If the telltale is still tucked under the run ring like that, then it wasn't a bite. There was no force applied from the hook link. All that's happened is that you've had a massive liner and the lead may have well have got dragged out of position like that. If a force is applied from the lead side, 
then that telltale doesn't go anywhere. It's only when a force is applied from the rig side that that telltale can possibly be ejected. I think one of the reasons why lead clips are so popular is that it's really easy to swap lead size. And at the end of the session, you just unclip the lead, stick it in your bag, and it doesn't damage your rods. The great thing about this little setup is that you can do exactly the same. Take the lead off at the end of the session, change leads if you have to in terms of shape or style. Very flexible, very convenient. Let's talk about rig safety. If you watch my video on lead clips, you'll see how easy it is to set up a lead clip to create a dangerous situation. With this setup, it's actually really hard to get it wrong. Let me show you what I mean. The draft angle on this tail rubber gives me a really nice fit. I just nip it on there like that and that's good enough. But even if I'm a bit heavy handed and really drive it on, I can't get it wrong. That is still gonna pop off. Even if I jam that ring on really hard with a bit of lubrication from the water and a good shake from the carp, that ring is still gonna eject every single time. When we're carp fishing, it's so important that the lead can safely and quickly separate from the hook in the event of a mainline failure. This system separates every time, very safe, very reliably. If you watch my mono hair rig video, you'll know that I'm still a big fan of the simple running ledger. But this system does offer some advantages over that we get that initial hooking force. If you're fishing for carp that see a lot of angling pressure, trick rigs like this can be very effective. To complete a review of rig safety of this setup, let's just have a look at how this ring is gonna pass freely over the tubing. So I've already broken that off there a bit, little shake. So that's gonna slide through there freely and it's gonna pass over this little sinker I've put on the end. That sinker is just helping keeping the tubing next to the swivel doing its job and doesn't interfere with that ring whatsoever. That's gonna pass over there and if we got to a break in the main line, that lead is gone. With a setup like this, don't be tempted to try and turn it into a double shock rig. Don't put a bead on the tubing up here somewhere because that is likely going to cause big problems. You can do it on a leadless leader and I'll probably do a video on that at some point in the future but do not put beads on this tubing. Okay let's have a quick chat about when and where to use it and most importantly when not to bother. I know a lot of you guys uh, fishing weedy venues get lots of questions on weed would I fish this lead setup in weed? Unless the weed was pretty sparse, I wouldn't bother. There's too much for the weed to get snagged on. I find this rig particularly useful when I'm fishing at big range, actually. I find the fit between the ring and the tail rubber really secure. I can push that on tight. And um, what that means on a big chuck with a big lead, I know that the impact force isn't dislodging that ring. I've done lots of casting, lots of testing on this, and as long as you put, you've got to push it on fairly firmly, but if you get that right, it'll stay in place, and even if you're not actually hitting the clip, as long as that ring doesn't budge, then you'll get a nice tangle-free presentation. Because of the quality of fit between the ring and the tail rubber, it's also great for fishing little PVA sticks. Whenever we add a PVA stick to a setup like this, if we don't have a tight enough connection between the ring and the tail rubber, there is a chance that the PVA stick can pull the tail rubber out of the ring. And then we lose our trick indication system. So keep your stick small, hit that clip when you're making your cast, and it should all land beautifully and operate as I've shown. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you can get 
all the different elements to work in harmony like I've shown, then this is a really neat little setup. And it can definitely swing the odds in your favour. As always, if you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments.